straight to work with the software they came to use, and worry about the infrastructure details later. Because as we've seen, there's a lot to learn to get everything, uh, to, to get used to everything involved with, with Juju. And uh, sometimes you just want to deploy something and start using it, and then learn about how it got there after you're already up and running. Um, so I'm, I'll, I'll sort of just briefly discuss the problem we're trying to solve and motivate it a little more. Um, then I'll do a demo of Contra and show uh, what it looks like. And, uh, and then we'll save some time uh, at the end to just talk a little bit about what you would want to do, uh, what you need to do to create, uh, to enable users of your own charms and bundles to use Contra to get started with your software. Okay, so let's just suppose uh, I have a project that I want people to be able to deploy easily, or a project I want to deploy and just get started using. Um, I'm picking uh, just a, an example of something that was a, a bundle that's on our Charm store, that jujucharms.com slash big data has a bunch of big data related bundles, and uh, this is one where you end up with a Zeppelin dashboard with a Hadoop cluster behind it, and you want to do some big data analysis. Like maybe, uh, Maybe this hotel wants to know who drinks more coffee, right? Developers or you know, sales associates at a bank. I don't know, I'm kind of curious, right? Um, so maybe they have all that data somewhere and they just want to get started, right? They know they're going to need, they know it's big data, although that probably isn't, but they know they've got big data and they want to start looking at it. But they don't necessarily want to spend two weeks learning everything about Juju to get, to get there. So, Juju deploys that one, right? Well, Depending on the back end, it's a few related services, a couple of charms, uh, you need a quorum for one service, you know, there's some config you want to tweak, so it's not just deploy Zeppelin and you're running, right? So, right, you need a bundle. Bundles are great. Uh, you can set the right relations, add some configuration tweaks, some machine constraints to help ensure a correct deployment, and then you deploy the bundle. And, and in Juju 2.0, you can deploy bundles natively. Juju, deploy my bundle. Great. And then you sell it. <laughs> right? Well. So uh, you're going for this, right? Deploy this bundle, and then head on over to your new back dashboard and dive in. Get going. It's one, two, there's no number three, you're doing science. Right? Well, you know, easy. Your users doing what you came for and not worried about getting set up on the tools that you're using. But the reality is, you're in the right place, but there's still some work to do before you can get started, right? So uh, you know, first you need to set up credentials, you need to pick or add a cloud to your Juju environment. Uh, you need to bootstrap a control on the cloud. Now maybe you need to edit the bundle YAML to tweak the config a little bit for your specific location, um, then you deploy. And then you wait. And once you know these four services over here say ready, and that one says OK, uh, then you run some Juju actions to start some initialization tasks, create user accounts, maybe import some, some data, maybe run some benchmarks. And then you've got a cluster that you know is working and you can get going. Right? Now, Juju makes all of that a lot easier than it was before Juju, right? This is, I'm, I'm not trying to say that this is bad. This is really good. Um, but it's still a lot to get going, right? And you need to know what all the terms are. So don't blame Juju, right? It might, be sound, it might sound like I'm saying it's too complicated, but it's not. It's a very powerful tool that's generic and needs to be complex because it's solving complicated problems. The right thing to do is build tools on top of it for specific use cases. So there's already a lot of good work to build friendly generic UI. There's the, the Juju GUI. Uh, it's a web-based UI for, for uh, configuring services, building bundles, and deploying them. Uh, but what about the specific use case for, that I've been talking about? Um, just getting started quickly. Well, that's, that's what Contract is supposed to be, right? So it's a targeted UI for a specific use case, getting up and running with a new stack. So the idea is, don't worry about getting off the ground yet. Let, let's take care of that for you. And you can just focus on your mission on top of it. Um, you know, I plan it. That's your problem. So, uh, Contra, a little more detail about it. It's a single a command line tool that uh, displays a command line UI. You can SSH to your server or somewhere out in the cloud, 
run Contra up and you're getting a usable UI, not quite a GUI, but a command line UI. Um, that walks you through the process of deploying some big software. So the first step is you choose a stack to deploy. Uh, there are a couple options. We have some built-in, uh, what we're calling spells. Spells are just a Juju bundle with metadata and helper scripts. There's, so the design philosophy of Contra is that you're using Juju. You're using Juju bundles. You're using Juju charms. Everything you do to get used to, to, to set up a cluster with Contra and get used to how to, how to use it are skills that you can use for using Juju in earnest on its own later. Um, so uh, then you choose a cloud, bootstrap on that cloud, can configure and scale charms. Uh, the spell author will let you, will narrow down some of the configuration options that you can edit in Contra. So uh, if you've looked at some of these charms, they can be very powerful, very general purpose. Some of them have configuration options that it's not clear whether or not you need to set that. Uh, it's not clear if the first time you use that charm if you, you know, if you need to look at all of the configuration options. And, and the truth is you probably don't, right? Most of them have good defaults for everything. Uh, so Contra will show you the configuration options for each charm that makes sense, that, that you actually need to, to handle just to get up and around. Um, then deploy the apps and watch them for you and let you know when they're actually deployed and usable. And then run some post-processing and text actions. And then tell you what the next steps are about where to go to get started with the thing you just set up. Okay, uh, so sit back, maybe have a drink. I, I think that's actually, it's getting its temperature taken, but it looks like a drink. Um, we're gonna do a little drink. Um, so this is okay. Yeah. So uh, the I haven't shown the website yet, but uh, conjureup.io, conjure-up.io is the website for this project. Uh, so there's a couple of packages that you need to install before. Uh, before you can actually run Contra, but not too many. And uh, as we as we move through the beta period for Juju 2 and get everything settled in, eventually it'll just be app install Contra and run it. Okay, so this is what it'll look like when you run Contra with no arguments. We have a list of recommended spells, and these are bundles of, uh, of various stacks that have the, the metadata and the, and the run scripts set up with them. These are things you can just launch right away. So we have a few. Um, I'm going to demo the Elastic Stack. It's uh, this is Elastic Search, Log Stack, and Kibana for, uh, for some log data analysis. So I hit enter. I'm going to choose a cloud. Right? These are all the cloud types that Juju supports uh, out of the box, including uh, local host down here is LexD on the, on the server that I'm running. Uh, the server that I'm running Contra up on. So I can, if I go, if I had picked uh, the OpenStack, we have an OpenStack spell that uh, is under development for deploying an entire OpenStack on LexD containers on a single system. Um, that uh, also, uh, so I, I'm demoing the, uh, the OpenStack so I can actually deploy it to any of these cloud providers that I have to count on. If I pick one, it'll ask me for my credentials for that, for that cloud provider and then set up all the, all the Juju credential files and everything that you can set up. Uh, I'm gonna pick localhost. Um, I've already bootstrapped, I cheated a little bit for the demo, I've already bootstrapped a controller on, uh, on a LXD container on the system, so I, I skipped a step. Uh, it'll just show you that it's waiting for your bootstrap. Background. Um, so yeah, uh, this is what we're looking at. It, this bundle has four applications in it, and as I scroll through here, I get a little bit of information about each of them, each of these. Um, this is information taken from the, the bundles readme. Oh, excuse me, the, uh, the transfer. And then if I configure, sometimes there there's nothing to configure. 
can also conjure up a spell that's in a local directory, which is what I just did. And then it skips the spell picking screen, obviously. Um, so if I configure, uh, in this version of this spell, it lets me pick a couple of configuration options for Elasticsearch, like the cluster name and whether or not the firewall's enabled. And then I can just deploy it. And it'll start deploying in the background while I configure other stuff. And <coughs> so I'll just start those deploying, and it'll just kind of go through here. This is uh, essentially the Juju workload status. We're waiting. The spell is going to pull the workload status <coughs> and tell me when it's ready. Basically, this, this uh, status screen will go away when it's ready. And what we'll see after that it's something that looks a little bit like this. This is a, a separate spell, but when that status screen goes away, the next thing you see is what is uh, a list of additional steps you could take. Um, these correspond to things like Juju actions, where if you wanted to uh, run an action for, for a benchmark or for, say, importing images into your OpenStack or something like that, um, this is where you do it. And then when you're done, you would just if you summary, and there, this one actually doesn't have much to say, but uh, if, there's, if there's information that this bell needs you to know, like here's the URL for your dashboard, or uh, you know, here's your username and password that we've configured for you, it would be shown on this screen. So that's what it looks like to use Conjure Up to deploy uh, a, a stack with Juju bundles onto your choice of clouds. Yes? If you want to do the OpenStack on LXP, can you say that's still a work in progress? I believe it works well now. We had, a, uh, we had an issue that we had to solve uh, late last week. It's, it's spinning up uh, all of the OpenStack services inside containers on the host that you're running in Contra. Okay, so yeah. yeah. So you end up actually solve a bunch of Contra and then on that point. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, if there are, if there are any questions about uh, Contra from the from the usage end, uh, I can take them now. Um, otherwise, we could just go quickly a little bit over what uh, what it takes to create a spell. So, yeah, question. Are there any plans to integrate this with the Juju UI? Uh, not at the moment. Now, so when you say Juju UI, which what exactly do you mean? The the web UI, the the GUI? Um, no, one of the one of the advantages of, of Contra is that you, if, if you don't easily have access to pointing a browser at the UI from wherever Juju is running, um, this is much simpler. You definitely got SSH to your server and the internal stuff will work. Um, they're kind of solving separate problems. Also, as I said earlier in the talk, the Juju UI is a very generic tool. Um, and this is, while it's generic for what kind of stacks you can deploy, it's really a get started using your software, you know, uh, avoid some of the complexities. We, we don't expose all of the configuration options or all of the different things you can do to uh, you know, edit the placement of services on, on systems or anything like that that you can, also, that you can do with the more powerful GGU. Yeah. It seems like the problem that this is trying to solve is more or less getting started in a certain moment. From, from what I gather is that most use cases will require that we start as fast as possible, but after that, we will always want to like mess, mess with the, 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 the backend stuff. Yeah. And so it, it would seem to me like that uh, this would be a great addition to the, to the UI, where like this would be a way to get started with the bundle, and then when the bundle is actually deployed, you get that forward to the rest of the UI. And 
like the, the, the status messaging and the, the advanced status where, where like you can get a statement, is this possible actually be yeah. This would be something that's 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 very useful. It, it this could be um, yeah it integrated with for example UI with the product plan itself. Yeah. It, it, it seems that the usefulness of most of these features goes a lot further than simply setting up this stack. So, so practically, after you have completed the deployment with Conjure App, you do have access to the Juju GUI that is associated with the Juju controller that has been instantiated for this specific button. So you get started on this as quickly as possible, and then you can tinker with the model using the GUI as, as a next step. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. That, as I mentioned before, the whole the whole uh, design process behind this is then that we, we want to emphasize that you're not what you get when you're done running Contra is a Juju controller with a Juju model running your software. Everything Juju works, right? You don't have a Contra controller, or and you don't need to use Contra tools to make changes. You, you've got a real Juju environment that then all the other tools. Uh, was there another question over here first? Uh, just uh, yeah. quick, uh, I just want to know about where you, where you quickly find all the skills that you can use in the world. Oh, um. Or is it any Juju font that you can have? So I'll, I'll an answer that in a little more detail right there. Uh, so you had a question. Sorry, just a quick comment. I mean, if you're using Juju Jay, I mean, there's the GUI command. Juju GUI shows you uh, the endpoint that you're using, the URL. But yeah, so it is, it is yeah, built in already. And it, since it's just Juju, you can just fire that up. And this is more or less a problem for making it more quick stuff. I believe so, yeah. <laughs> So the, the current curated spells are all in this repo on GitHub, uh, Conjure Up slash spells. And uh, basically con the Conjure Up tool syncs with this repo and shows you what's in here. Um, as far as what if you have a spell that we haven't integrated into the main repo yet, there are a lot of different ways to get a spell. Um, you can give it a URL of a tarball, and it'll grab it. If there's a spell inside that URL, it'll work. Uh, you could also give it a local directory if you're testing a, a spell or if you grab one some other way. Um, 
if you have a repo on GitHub that is as well, uh, you can give it the username and, and the repo name, and it'll go grab it from GitHub. Um, the last bullet is about the our main GitHub repo for, for the spells, and it's uh, if you want to add a spell to the built-in set, uh, we're open to that. And so you know, submit a pull request or talk to us beforehand, and uh, and we'll help with that. Um, so I'll just run just really quickly uh, through what the process of making a spell on top of a bundle looks like. Um, if you want to see more detail, I'll be hanging around the rest of the day and, uh, and we can talk uh, about that. And it's not clear that everyone necessarily is going to want to run right out and do a spell, but I'll just give you a feel for how, how much it involves. It's not a whole lot of work. Um, so basically, you got to start with the bundle, uh, decide what kind of charm config options you want to expose, and what kind of actions you want to support after the things are up and running. Uh, those are basically your design decisions. Um, a spell is just a directory with the metadata and an in script. So the, uh, this is the example for the elk stack spell here. The metadata file it's just called metadata of the animal. Uh, it shows a couple of simple things that I'll show in the next slide. Uh, the steps subdirectory has uh, a script that you run for each step and a little <coughs> metadata file for each of the scripts. And a special script called deploy done, which is just the script that pulls the Juju workload status to tell when everything's okay. And this is a completely generic script that just returns true when it's okay to move on. Um, and the reason for that is it can do things that are as simple as checking that everyone's status is ready, or it could uh, be a lot more thorough about it and uh, ping API endpoints and make sure that really everything's up and running and it actually works. Um, so I've shown two versions of this because you can either have uh, the metadata just say where to get the current bundle if your bundle is on the charm store and you update it there and that's the source of truth for what's the current bundle, then you can leave it out of your spell. Or you can bundle your bundle inside the spell as a file and release it from there. Here's all that's in the metadata currently. It's just a, a name for the menu. Uh, if you haven't included a bundle YAML in the spell directory, you gotta tell us where to find it. Um, version, it's early days, so the version is actually been used. Um, so inside the steps, uh, as I said, there's uh, the deploy done step script. Uh, each, each step is just uh, step 0, uh, 0 n, you know, 0 1, 0 2, etc., and then name it whatever you want. Um, they are sorted alphabetically by the file name, which is why we have step 0 1 in there. Uh, they can be required or optional, right? So sometimes uh, some of the steps might be like run a benchmark be optional, but some steps might be, uh, you know, input credentials from the root user of your, of your new stack, and that's going to be you know, required. So just a couple tweaks there. Um, it can be any executable, uh, the, the spell script can be anything that's executable, but if you use Python, we have some utility libraries that help with the output. So I'll, I'll go slow or quickly through this example step here. Um, basically, the step, this is the metadata on the, on the left-hand side here. You get a description of the step, whether it's required, and then you can add additional input to the step. <coughs> so for instance, uh, in this one, we're giving it a, a path to a public key to, to upload to, I think this came from the key step, um, in the stack. And so what we see here is that uh, when, you, when you're on the final screen where you're running the steps, there will be a little text input that says, you know, do you want to use the default or do you want to have a different public key path? The user can add that in. Um, and then that gets exposed as an environment variable with the name of the key here. And then we do whatever we need. 
need to do. If, uh, if we don't find that, we run it, we generate it, then we're uploading it to uh, to Keystone. And then uh, this success function, you can't really see it here, but it just says success and then a message. And that's the our little utility library's way of saying that you know, this bell worked. I'm oh, sorry, the, uh, the action worked for this bell. Um, oh, the, I think I already showed what that looks like. Yeah, I did. I showed the the screen where it had an input where we were uh, inputting the URL. Um, it's just a little text. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's everything. If you have, there's uh, a lot more documentation and information at Conrad.io and uh, information about how to get in touch with us. And if you have any further questions, I'll answer some now, and I'll be around for the rest of the day. Thank you. For